Hi, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson and you're watching Get Your Sax Together. Hey, when you're playing saxophone, do you ever get a sore lip? I know it can be really painful, but if you get a sore lip when you're playing a saxophone, I've got the perfect solution for you today. We're going to go through all the symptoms, the causes, and more importantly, the solutions. So I've got a little presentation lined up for you, and we're going to run through all this stuff to stop you getting a sore lip when you play saxophone. But just before we dive in there, I've got this great free thing for you, which is my Saxophone Success Masterclass. It's a whole hour of really awesome teaching, which you can just help yourself to just fill in your email. Just click the link that you can see there or click the link in the script in the description to get access to that um, free resource and without further ado let's start looking at um, this whole business of having a sore lip when you play saxophone and what we can do about it okay let's talk about this whole problem with sore lips it can be a real issue for so many saxophonists i'm going to break down some of the factors that cause it and some of the solutions. So first of all, we're gonna look at the symptoms. How does this show up with your lips? Then we're gonna look at the causes. Finally, we're gonna look at the typical solutions <laughs> that most people do, and I'm gonna walk you through what I consider to be the best solutions for the problem. So let's start with the symptoms first of all. How does this sore lip stuff actually show up? Well, the first thing that can happen is that you get sores or cuts on the tissues on the inside of the mouth, that's kind of on that panel of tissue that would normally be curled over your teeth on the inside of your mouth. That can be really sore and inflamed and cause a, a lot of problems and distress. Or um, the inside of your mouth there could be bruised. So it's very tender when you go to play your saxophone. I've had that in the past where uh, you can't play because it feels very bruised and tender. Or the third thing that you're going to get is cuts on the actual outside of your lips, you know, like on the bottom lip, on the fleshy part, which is exposed to the air, not on the inside shiny part. And you typically get two lines or rails, cuts where the reed sits on your bottom lip. So uh, in both these cases, you can have uh, bleeding and that can turn into scabs or sores, which is very painful and very distressing. And if you've experienced this, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You can also get rashes uh, just below, see the sort of pink line of your lip, just below there, just uh, uh, underneath there, you can have rashes and sores, which if you curl your lip over, can make it quite painful to play your instrument. Now, all these things should be considered distinct from actual cold sores. If you've got actual cold sores, um, which I believe you can never get rid of. And uh, I know a lot of players get cold sores and it can be a real problem. That's the kind of scabs, like spots or scabs um, on your lips, anywhere around your lips. Now, my wife gets it and if she gets cold sores, then I'm not going to kiss her for weeks, <laughs> which is unfortunate. But there's no way I want to get cold sores because once you get it, you can never get rid of it. So that is not something you want to get. But what, uh, I'm talking about things which are different from actual cold sores. So what are the causes of all this stuff? First of all, the main cause is having your lip curled over your teeth and using excessive pressure on the bottom of the reed. Ah. Uh, that's the typical sort of clarinet type embouchure. When you use that in saxophone, your teeth press into the inside of your lip and when you're squeezing up in the reed, that can cause a lot of pressure and give you this really sore lip stuff. However, this can be exacerbated if you've got sharp, jagged or uneven teeth, bottom teeth, because if one tooth is slightly higher than the other, that can act like a chisel and push into the bottom of your lip. And when you're using that lip pressure, or if you've got particularly sharp teeth, or if you're, you know, a vampire and you've got filed teeth, <laughs> that's gonna cause you a lot of problems. Uh, another thing which can cause problems on the exterior of uh, part of your lip is if you have a badly finished reed, like a jagged reed with a bit of, you know, it's not sanded off properly, it's not smooth. Now. In the past, I don't know about these days, but in the past that Rico, just plain Rico reeds used to be pretty bad for that, pretty badly finished. And they would cause, they would be sharp and have almost splinters, I guess. Not that the splinter would dig in your lip, but that sharp part of the reed would cause those uh, bleeding rails that I mentioned earlier in the symptoms. 
Quite a few modern synthetic reeds, I've noticed, are harsher on your lip than a cane reed. You know, the, the cane, uh, especially when it, gets, when it gets wet, has got a certain amount of give in it. You know, it goes a bit soggy. Whereas the synthetic reeds remain hard and inflexible. And if they've got a sharp edge, that can really um, hurt your lip. Now, in rare cases, I've, uh, I've seen people who have got an allergy to cane. Now, this is a bit unfortunate if you're a reed player. Now, that would be the perfect opportunity to use synthetic reeds, I would say, if you've got an actual allergy to cane. But yeah, somebody I work with in the West End, she's got an allergy to cane and she has to cover the her lip. I, th I can't remember what she does, actually, but she covers her lip, I think, so that the cane doesn't touch her lip. Imagine that. And the other cause can be, especially with the rashes, um, underneath the bottom of your lip can be when you're in very cold or windy weather and then you move indoors into a hot environment. Now this happens all the time on gigs of course, especially in cold climates. You're outdoors, it's windy, it's cold, you move inside and the venue is hot and sweaty and humid and those changes can really cause havoc on your lip. Um, of course, the other cause of having really sore lips is cold sores, like I mentioned earlier, but there's not a lot you can do about that apart from uh, trying to treat the symptoms. Okay, let's now move on to the typical solutions, the uh, folklore of sore lips that I've seen over the years. Typical thing to do is to use a lip balm or chapstick. Now, uh, in the next section, I'm going to give you a little bit of a warning about doing that, but that is something that people do, especially in the cold weather. Um, to protect their lips so that they don't get sore with the changes of temperature. You very often see people fold up cigarette papers, you know, Rizzler papers or whatever the brand is, and they form a little kind of, um, I guess it's like a little sort of U-shape, and you fold it over your bottom teeth, which provides a sort of cushion so that when your lip then folds over on here, your lips don't bite into the inside part of your lip and cause problems. So I've seen many people over the years just covering their bottom lip with cigarette papers to try and deal with this this uh, solution. I've also seen people use teeth guards, uh, specifically designed teeth guards, which go over their bottom teeth and provide, again, a cushion so that their, their teeth don't dig in. Um, if you really do have a problem and a very sore lip, you might have to play with a different embouchure, you know, with, with lip in an unfamiliar position or like the mouth. I've seen people throw the mouthpiece out the side if they've got a sore lip or lip much further in or lip much further out, which isn't an ideal thing because you want to play with the embouchure that you're used to. Sometimes you might even have to stop playing all together if you get really bad lip problems, which is not what you want at all. So what are the best solutions in my opinion? So number one, to get rid of this whole problem with using too much pressure, you have to turn your lip out and use what I call a goldfish style embouchure. Now, linked on the card above will be my video on how to do this goldfish embouchure, so I won't spend too much time on it. But in a nutshell, what you're going to do is push the, uh, the sides of your lip inside at the, uh, you're going to push the sides of your mouth forward and in like this, like forward, and in, and then you get this goldfish round shape. Now, why do you do this? Because it pushes your bottom lip out and it makes it soft and baggy, all right? There is still some bottom lip over your teeth, but you're not curling your bottom lip over your teeth. Now, this means that you can use minimum bottom lip pressure and you're gonna get a much better sound as well. And because you're not using a load of force up on the reed, your bottom teeth aren't digging in to this part of your lip and you won't get sore lips anymore. So this is, uh, um, I'm gonna cover some of the some of the other, you know, lip problems that we mentioned before, but this must be overwhelmingly the most common problem with sore lips. You're biting up on the reed, your bottom lip is curled over your teeth and you get all these problems, bru bruising, cuts, all sorts going on there. Also, because your lip is uh, pulled back and compressed 
it's much harder and harsher on the actual outside lip tissue as well as the inside lip tissue. So, corners of your mouth, forward and in. Your bottom lip is naturally going to curl out when you do this. And you're just going to use minimal jaw pressure up on the reed. That's going to let the, the reed vibrate to its maximal capacity. And you're also smothering less of the reed inside your mouth. So you're going to get a bigger, fuller, more rich tone. So no sore lips and a much better tone. <laughs> That's kind of like quite a good little constellation of uh, effects from doing this. Now, if you are in cold weather, even if you've got a nice lip out, uh, you know, loose, um, minimal lip pressure embouchure, you can still get problems. So a lip balm or a barrier on your lips is quite a good idea to, to um, seal your lips and prevent those rapid changes of temperature, you know, chapping your lips. However, I would advise you to be quite careful what you put on your lips. So a lot of things have got, you know, petrochemicals and they're not very good for your lips. You can also actually dry out your lips more by using a lip balm rather than regulating it, you know, with your body's natural devices. So I would recommend using quite a natural, organic um, product if you're going to put something on your lips. And also just be aware that the best thing you could probably do is cover your lips if you're outside in the cold. I try not to use lip balm because I find it actually dries out my lips more. Uh, than if I don't use it. And what I do is I cover my mouth. If I'm outside and it's it's frosty or cold or windy, I cover my mouth with a scarf or a, you know, a schnood or whatever you've got. And that just creates a little kind of uh, microclimate inside, inside your scarf. Um, your breath warms up the air next to the scarf and you'll find that your lips stay nice and moist. So then when you go back indoors and it's hot and humid, there's not that rapid change of temperature. These are all the things you have to consider as a woodwind player, unfortunately. Um, if your teeth are uneven or sharp or jagged, you might want to consider getting a custom fitted dental guard. Now, inside the Inner Circle membership, we were lucky enough to have 90 minutes with Ernie Watts, and he has got a custom built uh, guard which goes over his bottom teeth. Now, he's not somebody that uses, um, he doesn't bite with his embouchure. He's got a super loose embouchure, you know, lip out, lovely big rich sound but his teeth are still uneven and so he's got this dental guard which he just pops on his bottom teeth to even it out so that's something else that you can consider also um whenever you're adapting your physiology to any kind of exertion you want to gradually transition if you're going to increase volume try not to go from zero to hero in two days you know don't do five minutes practice and then suddenly start trying to do two hours practice because even if you are using the correct embouchure it will pay havoc on your lips so you have also got to adapt gradually to your practice volume now when you do all these things that's going to give you the happy lips that you want and uh, hopefully you'll be able to enjoy your saxophone more plus you'll have a much richer sound so it's a win-win situation so that's all we've got time for this week i really hope you enjoyed that little presentation on uh, getting a sore lip when you play saxophone the causes and what you can do about it and as a special bonus how your tone will dramatically improve once you solve this little problem so like i mentioned earlier go and check out the old saxophone success masterclass using the link there if you have bought me a coffee i really really appreciate it it's very much uh, it's very well received thank you very much and if you'd like to buy me a coffee because you think you're getting good value you can use the link that you can see there and finally just before you go i'd invite you to check out the inner circle membership which is an awesome place and a really friendly community of like-minded saxophonists like you where you can share your passion and get a bunch of awesome content including weekly bonus videos that go alongside these um youtube videos these public youtube videos so go and check out the inner circle you can see the link there and until next week <laughs> i hope you practice hard practice smart and enjoy your music take it easy see you later so that's all we've got time for this week. I really hope you enjoyed. Oh, hang on. I need a clapper board. That's what I need. Got a clapper board, actually. Must dig out my clapper board. <laughs>